What did you do, sir? I'd like you to explain from the beginning the inspiration right the way through to what ultimately happened. Right. And, sir, your feeling on that day. Well, what basically happened is, at the spring, I've... Uh... The, if you look, go back to the pictures of the fields... If we could, of the fields, yes, yeah. please. If you look at the t a photograph on the top left-hand corner, mm -hmm. you'll see all the trees round the fields, yeah? Yes, sir. Basically, uh, before all the leaves come on, before the spring, yes. I, ha I have to lob, lob all the branches, cos over four or five years they grow, and you can't get the tractors close to the fence lines, otherwise you smash the cabs up, etc. I understand, yeah. So, before all the leaves started growing, and before we roll the field, seed them, uh, fertilise them, etc., I went round with a load of tractor and cut all the branches down. I made a massive bonfire. Yes. You seem to get genuine joy out of doing it yourself. Yeah, I do everything myself. I just get on with it and make sure it's done. Understood. Not everybody that has that amount of land seeks to do that. Right, you made a bonfire of the excess wood around the trees. What yeah. happened next, sir? Basically, I tried to set lights all... I made a big pile of, you know, about a 30-foot round pile of all the branches... Yes. ..and it wouldn't catch fire. Right. And I was so annoyed with it, I thought, I know what will get it going. So I went round to the front with a load of tractor, picked the boat up, put it on top of the fire and set light to it. Because I'd had enough and I told me to get rid of it. I said I'd get rid of it and I couldn't get that. I was so annoyed I couldn't get the wood going because it was damp. <laughs> and so I just set light to the boat and it went up really well. But it smoked a lot, but it did burn. And it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of Roy. But I've saved, I've saved, saved Mick really killing himself. I've saved the sea from a, another boat sunk to the bottom, more pollution. So I've done everybody a favour, really. Mickey. I'm here. When were you notified that your boat had been burnt to a crisp? Yeah. That it was an ex-boat? Yeah. That Roy was dead? Yeah. <laughs> when were you notified? Uh, it wasn't long after that, but I didn't... I thought he was joking. So did I! <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't really take a lot of... I laughed it off. And then when I spoke to him again... Yes. Look at me, sir. I what? said to him, you didn't burn the boat. I did burn the boat. Understood. So, you are suing today for how much? Well, I want to get £2,100 back. That is, the value is fair. that is the value of the boat, Plus coupled with the extras that you paid for. £350. Which I'm satisfied were extras that you paid for. Sir, it's an interesting question, believe it or not. The boat was on your land licensed, in effect, where you had given clear and unequivocal instructions that you would remove it in the event it stayed longer than 12 months. This was on your land for 13 months. Do you believe, based upon that, that you were consequently entitled to destroy his property? Yeah, I think so. I, put, you know, I, I gave him pr uh, plenty of uh, opportunity to take it and he didn't, so it helped me do me a favour, getting my bonfire going. I had to go, so it went. I feel sorry for him, because he spent a lot of money. He loved his boat. He does love his boats, but I can't stand the thing. It was, it was, it was an eyesore. I used to have people... I wouldn't let people sometimes in the front gate. I used to bring them round the back drive, because I was embarrassed about it. It's, 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 it's horrible. Now, thing. it seems to me that there were three Roys now that have lost their lives. <laughs> Two have drowned at sea and one has been cremated. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> The principle in law, I have to tell you, Mark, you've represented yourself admirably, considering what you did. It isn't straightforward. And I want to say that in certain circumstances, let's say, for example, you had a document with terms and conditions making it clear that any property would be destroyed, you would be wholly legally in the right here. Do you understand? Yeah. But I'm afraid to say in this matter you are not. Mickey, you left valuable property, is what it is, on Mark's land. You did so in circumstances where Mark made it perfectly clear to you that it was only allowed to be there for 12 months. 13 months later, he made it equally clear that he wanted it gone. You did nothing to take that boat away. Ordinarily, that would mean that he could get rid of it because he gave you some warning about that. However, he has to give you clear and unequivocal notice about the fact that he's going to destroy it if that's what he intended to do. What's more, he had to give you a reasonable opportunity to come and get it. Yep. It seems to me that 
10 days, roughly, after that telephone call is not reasonable. What's more, the action that you took in burning it on the bonfire equally was not reasonable. And so, consequently, as a matter of law, especially because you didn't get it in writing, despite the fact you were doing him a favour, you are liable for all of the financial damage which flowed from you putting it on the bonfire, which is, in this case, £2,100. And that is the award of this court. I don't know whether you're going to buy a new Roy, but if I do, could you please let the Coast Guard know? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Mickey won his case and was awarded the full amount of his claim. Don't be stupid. Stay and watch the best judge of moments. And I'm talking. Understood? Don't be a moron. Subscribe to Judge Rinder YouTube channel. Right now. That's an order.